look around the blockchain gaming space, most of the time, it's unimpressive, right? There's a lot of projects. In fact, there's a sea of projects that are just subpar looking games that you might be able to earn crypto by farming or grinding or even using bots if you're that kind of person. But there's just not there's not a gameplay loop that just makes you want to play if you're a traditional gamer. Right now, I'm playing Mortal Online 2, which is not a play to earn game, and I'm a play to earn guy. Like I want to have fun in a game in addition to being able to invest and earn and all of that good stuff. So when the team over at Engines of Fury reached out to me to do a sponsored video, they talked to me about the fun factor, something that they were very, very focused on in a really, really visually impressive arena battle game. So I started taking a look at it. I really liked the look of it. So I agreed to do a sponsored video and showcase some of the things that I think are very, very cool about this upcoming project. First thing is they dropped a little, little tiny game teaser yesterday that I'm going to share with you now. So the game footage that they just dropped is pinned right on their Twitter account. As you can see, it's a 17 second video. Very, very short smidge, but there's a lot going on in the video that I'll break down for you. So here's the arena and the battle beginning, and that's about all we get, okay? So let me rewind it a little bit and just zoom in here. Now, there's a few things going on on screen. First of all, you have the two champions, right? So this guy is a gunslinger, and this gal is a swordsman. So you'll be able to customize their genders, their equipment, and you'll actually be able to control them on the battlefield. You can have various offensive and defensive things that you can do to best your opponent or the bosses, which are located in the back. We'll get to those in a minute, but these aren't the only two classes in the game. There's actually a scientist class or an alchemist that's gonna be featured as well. So we have the brawler or swordsman, we have the gunslinger and the alchemist or scientist. So there's going to be some choices that you can make to kind of figure out the meta and how to customize your characters in order to do well in these wager-based battles. And when I say meta, I mean in PvP, but there's going to be PvE as well. There's going to be boss fights, tournaments, you name it. So fight, addictive PvE and PvP duels and tournaments. Win and profit, receive tokens, forge NFTs and earn crypto. Upgrade your champion with legendary NFT items to win more, and you can even buy arenas, sort of like their land component, and become an arena master and earn passive income. So multiple ways to play and multiple ways to earn, as well as a focus on the fun factor and putting players first. The game in the crypto space that actually puts players first where they should be. This is one of the focuses on their web pages, guys, and I cannot tell you how I, how important I think this is. Engines of Fury, crypto seamlessly tied into the game with organic need for tokens and NFTs, meaning that they have a lot of utility for the tokens within the game, not just a buy sell type mechanic, you know, earn and sell and dump the price of the token. Numerous different addictive gameplay modes, which they're going to start with the arena mode, but this is going to be a full-fledged MMO one day. Instead of waiting the five years that it takes to develop a, a, a huge project like an MMO, they're doing the auto battler first and let players fall in love with the universe and start earning tokens. Now, deep lore, stunning 3D visuals and animations, which we saw a very, very small tease of that, and a well-defined scope with clear goals and reasonable buffers for development, which I think is extremely important. Most crypto games, they compare themselves to forcing the crypto aspect into the game mainly an earning mechanic with not a whole bunch of fun going on overlooked boring labor camp like gameplay i cannot stress to you how very very descriptive and accurate that sentence is to the the majority of blockchain games right overly simplistic art usually 2d or pixel there's quite a bit of that and over promising and under delivering which i believe every game developer in the industry <laughs> whether traditional or blockchain does that from time to time so being that these guys really understand that that happens a lot i really really think that there's a lot going on the champions are going to look as like this you'll be able to buy customize and upgrade your champions you'll be able to select from a swordsman gunner or scientist so there's probably going to be like a i guess a magic type component but it'll be technological if you ever played mass effect you know how they had like 
different types of abilities that weren't just like hacking and slashing or shooting. It was actually some powers and stuff. And that scientist is probably going to be some sort of utility there, right? Um, equivalent to maybe a mage or a technomancer or something like that. Gunner and swordsman naturally are very <laughs> self-descriptive, but you'll be able to choose the gender and other aesthetic features to make your champion truly unique, equip powerful items to become stronger. And it shows here they have like helmet, right hand, gloves, armor, left hand, and boots. And the right hand, this looks like a gun. So you're probably gonna be able to use some, some sort of range as well if you want, or maybe even dual wield or, or wield two-handed weapons. I'm not really sure about all of the NFTs yet for sure, but they will be available to, uh, soon. Forge, melt, or sell your NFTs. This is a really awesome mechanic. If you've ever traded NFTs before, you know that you have to do it on a marketplace and you can't sell unless you have a buyer. So if there's no interest in one of these trash items that you picked up that you can't use, Maybe it's just not a good item in the meta. Maybe everybody's using guns and you just keep getting melee weapons, right? What if you could melt them <laughs> and earn tokens from that? Like, equip, you know, some games you are, you can go to a marketplace and try to sell your items. Or you could sell them to the NPC vendors and make less money than you could, but you don't need a buyer. You just get cash no matter what. Being able to sell for more Fury tokens and then pick something up from the market that you really want or something that's competitive in the meta is really, really awesome, right? And they talk about the marketplace here. Buy or sell items and NFTs on the EOF marketplace. Explore the engines of Fury marketplace. Find rare weapons and armor to make your champion stronger. Have too many items on you? Make a profit. Sell them on the marketplace for Fury tokens or just melt them down if you want to. And there's a bunch of different ways to get these NFTs, but mainly you'll be able to get them through playing. You'll be in giving an experience as well as NFT blueprints that you'll get sometimes less often from PVP, but mainly from the boss fights. And the boss fights are supposed to be pretty exciting. And as you level up, you'll be able to fight higher level bosses, which will probably increase the chance of getting more rare loot. There's a bunch of loot classifications for these NFTs. You have common, rare, epic, legendary, and the most rare is actually called Furious. And while I don't have any footage of the actual boss fights, they are featured in the back of the arena here in the trailer. So you have the engine guard, which is this guy on the left. And here's a nice model of him that's looking really good. And then you have the nemesis. Okay. And this is going to be one of the main bosses in the game. Now, as you level up and get more experience and get better quality items, you'll be able to fight higher level bosses and get better chances to win more rare rewards. And if we jump to the white paper here, it says the PVE boss gameplay mechanics pay an entry fee in fury select the weapon armor nfts to equip skills and abilities you want to use for the fight an auto battler takes place in the arena where you can see your hero fight against the boss in a simulated and animated 3d fight the winner is determined based on the champion's class level and items as well as the ability or spell choices in addition to random odds. If the player wins, they'll receive fury tokens and the chance to also get weapons, armor, recipes for strong NFT items. Aside from what we saw on the website, the white paper covers the gameplay loop very, very well with all the aspects of it as well as the play to earn mechanics that I wanna to touch on. A good core gameplay loop should be able to put the player in a state of flow and continuously create incentives for the player to keep playing and wanting more. The old games started out with incentives like high score, right? Old school games, right? All you were going for is score. And now there's all sorts of things that you can get in games, whether it's achievements, winning currency, high score still, and even NFTs and crypto. And this is where it really comes from. A player should be fully engaged in the game. Nothing should distract their attention from the task at hand. I think it depends on what you playing, but specifically, if you think about a fighting game, okay? A fighting game or an adventure game or even a shooter like an FPS, you're engaged, right? You're not just playing like Fortnite or Call of Duty, just waiting around. You gotta be looking at the screen and stay alert and stuff like that. So 
That idea to keep players incentivized to keep playing is very, very fundamental in games. Players like to feel in control to face situations that are neither too easy nor too hard for them. Not spirit crushing difficulty, right? Like Dark Souls. A little bit of challenge as well as incentive to make you happy about succeeding through tasks while it's not so easy that you aren't even challenged. So essentially they're going to try to achieve that with their gameplay loop. And that's essentially training ground fights, getting used to the systems, figuring out the game with no consequence, right? Forging and buying new NFTs, upgrading your characters, so on and so forth, okay? Then going to getting into duels, player versus player, player versus boss, and even tournaments when you get real comfortable. Setting the stake amount, set NFTs to use, and set the abilities to use in the settings, and then going to fight the opponents, RNGs, ability stats, new NFT items and character levels all are going to kind of contribute to who wins or loses the fight. And then the rewards, you get fury tokens, items and recipes that you can actually craft into NFTs and experience, which helps you overall get stronger and get into some of the higher level fights. So essentially to make it simple, players are going to choose their stake or their wager. They're going to pick their skills and their NFTs that they'll be using for the fight. And they get matched against players of similar power levels as well as wager. And then the fight happens. Whoever wins takes both stakes. Whoever loses doesn't take anything. And tournaments happen in a similar fashion, except there might be a few winners in the tournaments and you get a chance to get NFT rewards at the end. Gameplay loop is essentially going to give you the ability to earn well. While you play. Engines of Fury provides a unique opportunity for players to extract in-game virtual earnings, turning them into real-world income, and encourage the monetization of time spent in the game world. So, you're playing a game, you get all this in-game currency, right? It's nice to be able to know that if you decide to stop playing or even want to use that earned money into something else, whether it's to buy a new game, more assets for that game, or even sell it to buy yourself groceries. You can because it's crypto and that's the flexibility of the blockchain. The Fury token is going to be able to be used to exchange for fiat currency seamlessly or frictionless as they say, and you can use it for whatever you like. That's ownership, okay? Compete in various engaging and unique weekly playing achievements, rewards for staying in the game playing. So if you've ever messed around with any mobile games that had like this show up and get paid type deal, it's essentially the idea where if you get a login bonus because they want you to come play more because there's monetization models and they'd like you to participate in that game's ecosystem for their players to stay engaged, right? Well, this way you're not just paying a fee by getting some points and deciding that you want to spend money to upgrade characters, your the ability to earn with those characters is going to be incentivized by upgrading and stuff like that, right? Players have a chance to receive NFTs after PvP tournaments, which can be melted into Fury tokens. Limited number of NFTs will be allowed to melt per month, as well as earning Fury tokens by winning matches and PvE boss mode. So, all of these tokens that you get, you'll be able to get them through any of these gameplay aspects and you'll be able to use them to invest back into the ecosystem to upgrade your characters or you can take them out just like any other cryptocurrency, which is very, very cool, right? They're even going to pay people to report bugs and bots. Guys, I've been a part of a bunch of crypto games that have bots that have wrecked it, like Alien Worlds got wrecked by bots. The token economy was screwed up. Axie Infinity has been plagued by this for a long time. Giving players an incentive to report anomalies like this that can ruin an economy, really, really smart in my opinion. So in a nutshell, the play to earn mechanics are going head to head in duels, player versus player, or in the tournaments, as well as the boss fights, getting NFTs, selling them or melting them down. Now let's move on to the team. The team is huge and doxed. Look at this, all right? CEO and founder, Mr. Salius Aleska has a LinkedIn icon that you can click on and go to the LinkedIn page. So they're docked, they're qualified, and there's a ton, a ton of people on this team all that have information that you can find on them. This is an art station link that you can pull up, which brings you to the studio and the work that they've done. And there's some very, very impressive 
assets that a lot of these people have designed. A quick overview of this, you can check out the white paper. They have a core team and advisors link, and there's a ton of investors that are on board, like Dow Maker is going to be their launch pad, Animoca Brands are involved, and they have countless guild partnerships that are going to be coming out so there's going to be a huge player base as soon as the game is available and if you wanted a snapshot of the backers that are already announced it's available on their twitter account which already has like good games lab unix double peak animoca brands gamefi and even good games guild which is one of the cedify projects that we talked a little of a while back so there's a ton of hype around this already the timeline for all this when is things actually happening actually right now it's starting okay quarter one 2022 which we're in the middle of february already they're gonna have their ideo and their launch okay their token launch so Mainly, if you are part of GameFi or you're part of Thoumaker, you'll be able to participate in this token launch. Best thing to do if you need information around that is join their Discord, check out their socials. I'm going to have some links in the description below for all of this, okay? They're actually going to show the gameplay off altogether, and the staking launch is going to start as well. So you'll be able to buy tokens after the launch goes live and stake them, okay? And then quarter two of 2022, which is after March, Jan champion nft pre-sale the item nft pre-sale and the wallet and smart contract setup so you'll be able to start accumulating assets in quarter two quarter three is the marketplace launch the demo game public launch pve only and the listing on the main exchanges okay so you're going to have your assets from the pre-sale if you register early enough and the market is going to go live, then you're gonna be able to start playing the demo game, PVE, and probably using these assets as well. And then in quarter four, you're gonna have the arena land sale, the alpha game launch, and the open world teaser reveal. Now we're starting to get into a little bit more dynamics outside of the arena mode. And then they're gonna be later on in quarter 21 of 2023, they're gonna do they're gonna start on the MMORPG development, the Dungeons and Raid Bosses teaser reveal as as well as mobile game development so there's going to be a ton happening on the timeline plenty early for you to start checking out this project now and keep up with their socials i realize i hit you with a lot of information like i do in all of my videos look if you're interested in the project okay i want you to go on to the description of the video there's some links down there for their web page and their twitter account which also has a link to their link tree where all their stuff is at so if you just go to the engines of fury page here right at the top you'll see the telegram and the discord as well as the link tree and the link tree provides a bunch of different links even some in some alternative language so you can find out all the information you need but this is their main source of communication their twitter their discord or their telegram i highly encourage you to follow them there for updates on information i'm also going to be posting information as i get it on these updates in my discord like i always do i try to keep up with the projects that i make videos on that i'm excited about i try to inform the community and even give you guys opportunities to win stuff when I have giveaways that are presented to me and stuff like that. My Discord is going to be in the link description below. It's discord.gg slash Zuljin. I'd love to see you there as well as let me know what you think in the comments, guys. As always, I really appreciate the feedback on any of these projects and what you think about them. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for watching, guys. As always, this is Zuljin signing off. We'll see you next time.